Live from our Liberty Harbor Academy studios, this is Gerard at Large. The Gerard at Large radio program is on the air. Good morning, Manchester. With your host, Richard Gerard. Thanks for tuning in. On 90.7 WLMW, New Hampshire Family Radio. GerardAtLarge.com. Damn, I'm good! Bringing you live and local news from your own backyard. Come Joining us now is Scott Gross. He's currently a selectman here in the town of Goffstown and a former member of the school board. He has something to say about what's happening at the Mountain View Middle School. And in as much as we've had a lot to say about it, we uh, thought we'd invite him on when it was brought to our attention. Scott, thanks for joining us here this morning on Gerard at Large. Thanks for having me, Rich. All right. So just by way of introduction, why don't you give a, a brief summary of who you are politically, professionally, personally, all that fun stuff? Sure. I'll, do, I'll, be, I'll keep it brief. Um, you know, I've been in Goffstown for almost 18 years, and politically, I served on the school board for seven years, and then the last six years I've been on the board of selectmen. So I think I have a pretty good uh, – you know, feel about the pulses of the community. I do talk to the, the citizens a lot. And this issue with Mountain View, um, it's just been a big problem, as you know, for the last uh, several years. I think there are multiple problems. I think that what's happening at the building is a problem, but I also think the way the school administration and the school board are dealing with it is equally as problematic. But we'll, uh, we'll get to that perhaps in a minute. What is it that you have been saying about Mountain View? What do you think needs to happen there and why? Well, uh, you know, one of my major concerns, and I and I wrote a letter to the paper you know, several months ago, was first and foremost, the, you know, what you hear from not only the students, the faculty, and also the the community at large, and none of them were really that positive. And although I think we have some phenomenal teachers at, at Mountain View, um, overall the school is underachieving. You know, in 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 my opinion, and the, I think the opinion of the people that matter most, and that's the students and and the parents. So. I wrote that letter, and um, I got a lot of incredible feedback from it. I mean, I've written letters to the editor before, but that was the one letter that I think I got universal support on in terms of you know the the opinions that I expressed. Going back to your question, though, you know what do I see as some of the primary concerns? I do think it's a leadership issue at the school. Um, you know, when when Mr. Hunt came, he was supposed to be there for a year or two. He was an interim principal. And I think he's been there now five five or six years. He's been there, I believe. Uh, I think he's entering either his seventh or his eighth okay. year now. So excuse me for – Well, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm only bringing it up because there's a lot of speculation in town that really uh, – I guess there's this thing that happens. You know, Administrators retire from Massachusetts, get a pension, work in New Hampshire for 10 years, get a pension here. And I guess some of our guys do the same thing. And there's a lot of speculation there that um, for whatever reason – he never meant to be an interim principal. He meant to go after that New Hampshire pension. Yeah, and I want to I want to try to be give Aubrey some background. When I served on the school board, Jim Hunt was hired, and um, it was my last year. And the way that the process works is, you, I didn't interview Jim, but a subcommittee of the school board did, et cetera. So he was hired. So that's where this is coming from. Your knowledge yeah. is firsthand that he sure. was supposed to be there for a year or two. It was my understanding that he was going to be there for a year or two. Yeah. And now, at the time, Rose Colby was the principal. She she then retired. Well, and he was brought in just to be there for a year or two, and then we're going to get another principal. Why would why would the district hire someone just for a year or two and then go get somebody else? That, what, that didn't make a lot of sense to me as a guy on the ground. Well, back then, again, you're trying to, trying to refresh was my memory. Try to, it was to try to correct some yeah. particular issues or problems, kind of like fix this, fix that, move on. Or right, and, and again, to offer a type of, some type of perspective, I think that, first of all, a, a middle school is always a very challenging school to – uh, to be in. I mean, elementary schools are one thing, high schools are another, but middle school is a challenging year. Um, but Jim was brought in, I think, to oversee some changes that we wanted to make. Um, yes, there were some concerns with, you know, adherence to curriculum, um, leadership issues, etc. And I know at the time, you know, we were trying to groom some of our, our local talent that we had within the district. And I think we did that at the high school. We did promote from within. So, at the time, you know, you are trying to, to time things. If you can get people within your district that you think are highly qualified, you're going to do that. And if you have to buy a year or two to do it, you, you might try to do those types of things. Now, are you – you mentioned uh, the feedback you got from that letter. Have you seen the survey done by the New Boston School District of its parents? Yes, I um, did. What, any, I, I, was, I was surprised by not only that but other commentary coming out of the New Boston uh, School District about – how unhappy even the kids are with the level of discipline at Mountain View. What, what were your take on the New Boston well, results? a couple of things. One, 
surveys and these types of things could be feeding frenzies. They, they really can be. I mean, a few people are vocal and all of a sudden everybody has, has issues and concerns. But I look at it from, from several different perspectives. Um, one, I've, I've talked with people from New Boston. I've talked with people from Dunbarton and, and obviously Goffstown folks as well. And there seems to be um, universal dissatisfaction you know, with, with the leadership. And you're right. And in the area of discipline, I have heard those same types of things where if certain kids, if you're a good kid and if you mess up a little bit, um, you, you face a pretty stiff punishment. But if you're a kid who is a habitual, a habitual offender, um, there's a little bit more of a leniency there. So that's one of the issues, Rich. But I want to kind of highlight, you know, some of the things that just as a, I've been in management professionally for over 20 years. And I look at and when you look at a leader or in this case, a principal you know, how would you evaluate their performance? And you take a look at what's their relationship with their staff. That's very important. If you're going to lead people, they have to respect you. They don't always have to like you, but they have to respect you and have to have trust in you. Um, next is what's the relationship with the community? What's your relationship with students? And then what's your actual, what's the meat and potatoes? What's the results you're getting, your test scores and things of that nature? And honestly, if you take an objective look at all this, I don't think that the current leadership there scores well in any of those areas. So and should should Jim Hunt, the principal in question, be removed? In, in my opinion, I, I would like to see him resign um, because I think that would be the honorable thing. You know, Rich, when I was in, on the school board, the thing that I always heard year after year, and to a certain degree I bought into it towards the end, was it should be all about the kids. And if it is truly about the kids – then Mr. Hunt is now a distraction. He's a distraction from the kids in the community moving forward and getting a good quality education. He's an impediment right now. And if he believes that he's right and he has that right to believe that or others who support him, um, that, may be, that, that may be true. But there comes a time in leadership where you, you become a roadblock, and that's what I think he is right now. Now, the superintendent of the district and the school board has seemed perfectly willing to let this drama drag out for years despite – I, Scott, I can't tell you the information that I have been given from teachers. I have the actual complaints that they've filed with the administration, the administration's response. The school board seems perfectly willing to put up with all of this foolishness, and now they have this 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 study, the the, the consulting yeah. study, um, and I, I the, the process in that. If we if we didn't catch them trying to hire somebody without putting out a request for proposal, they never would have put one out. Uh, and the school board didn't authorize its issuance. The superintendent didn't seek authorization to issue it. I mean, I don't know how you all do things in Govstown, but the rest of the world, there's a process that you go through when you're going to spend anywhere from thirty to sixty thousand dollars to make sure it's open, accountable, and 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 fair. None of that's happening. What at what point? And and by the way, this is probably going to come out wrong, but I'm okay with that. In a school district the size of Goffstown, why in God's name does Stacy Buckley, your superintendent, need a consultant to figure out what's going wrong in her building? Well, I think it's, that's, a, that's a good point, and I think it's a valid point. Because, frankly, your school district is smaller than the west side of Manchester schools. There, Rich, I think there are two issues here. Um, one is that when you talk about a, when you talk about a study, uh, it's my opinion that two things should have happened in that respect. One, I believe the superintendent is the school board should have requested that the superintendent, Stacy Buckley, um, issue her own report. If they did not feel that it was satisfactory, then they could have hired a consultant and gotten another, a second opinion. But they should have first and foremost asked her for her report as to what she believes the current condition of the school is. That's what, that's what we pay her to do, and I think that it would be a reasonable request to do so. But the other issue that we have here as a management, someone in management, is you have problems with staff. And sometimes those things do need independent assessment if it's a whistleblower action, things of that nature. And if management is could, could be uh, you know part of the problem, you might need an, an outside entity. So I'm I'm comfortable with them bringing in a consultant, maybe not for the entire scope of it, but certainly to to yeah. independently interview and address some of the employee concerns, both current and past employees. I think that is important, and that. That could and should be done independent of the superintendent. Are you comfortable that Diane McCarthy, the vice chairman of the school board, cast votes on and participated in these consultant discussions even though her employer was one of the bidders and that the only vote she abstained from was the one that awarded the contract to West Ed who was not her employer? Yeah, I don't know all the specifics of 
what her employment, et cetera, what divisions or well, whatever that she I'm, works I'm in. I'm telling but typically, you, she works for one of the bidders. You know, if you do work for someone, you have a you have to disclose it. She did she, not disclose okay. it. We actually yeah. caught her and reported okay. on it. Yeah, and I have the email to prove it. Yeah, I mean, I Rich, I really don't want to get into like the individuals, you know, yeah. especially well, and the that, school and that's board. Fair. But you know what? But, I want it. But you, you you had Keith Allard, former chairman of the board which I found was actually denying the distribution of teacher complaints to the school board. Um, he actually physically took them out of their mailboxes. I have that letter. He admitted it. Um, you, you have a school board going forward with a process that um, with, they never authorized. You had a superintendent personally soliciting bids from, from potential contractors without a request for proposal. Yeah. She was forced into issuing a request for proposal, which the school board actually never authorized or approved the issuance of. Then when she came and made her recommendations, she was asked for justification uh, on her recommendations and said she wouldn't do it in, not, in, in public session and never gave them the info. Uh, does, does your school board at some point uh, have to come into question for the way it's handled this whole situation, basically trying to do it behind the scenes? Well, you uh, obviously have – Done been a, a pesky lot. little yeah, thorn I, in their side. You're telling me a lot of things that I've I've not, I've not heard. So you're, you're rattling off a lot of things. So let me <laughs> respond to to some of that. First, you talked about um, when you spend money. I mean, it depends upon what the school district policy is with respect to I what they allow the superintendent to do and or what they allow I, has I, to be school board approval. And I just don't know that. I right believe now. the policy is anything over five thousand bucks has got to go through an RFP. Okay. In in the town of Goffstown, it depends upon the. The, you know the department that's involved, and but when it is, I mean, certainly you're right. I mean, it, it is a transparent process, and we have we post our bids, you know, online, and there are sometimes, you know, admittedly where the low bid isn't the right isn't the right one to pursue. Well, and and that happened here, um, where the low bid was not taken. Two of the lo- two of the lower bidders weren't taken. Um, do, so at at this point, Scott, what what do you think needs to happen with this study and? I know you've called for Hunt to resign. Um, should he resign and save the taxpayers the rest of the twenty-seven thousand? Uh, sorry, thirty-five thousand dollars, thirty-five thousand six hundred eighty-one dollars that are, are going you to know, be spent, it, or should the school board just say enough is enough and change the leadership there? Or at this point, do they have to wait for the study? You know, one of the things that we don't know, Rich, is you know it is a management employee type issue, and it is complicated. I, I don't know all the specifics to it, but should I would, Stacey Buckley's performance in this whole thing be evaluated by the outside consultant? Yes, and that is part of that. That that should be part of the process. There's that, a there's a great deal of skepticism on behalf of many people in the building about this study because of the approach they've adopted. Should there be a double blind study? Should there be somebody, an outsider, who reports directly to the school board, not to the administration? In that respect, I don't really think so. I, th- I think I think one is one is good enough, and and you sh- and you have obviously the school board members who should have a pulse on what's going on as well. So I don't think we need three or four redundant studies. I'm I'm not I'm not really an advocate of that. But I, I think we should have asked the superintendent to do her own report first. Scott Gross, thank you for joining us here this morning on Gerard at Large to weigh in on this very important matter affecting not only the town of Goffstown, but the towns of Dunbarton and Boston who send their kids to Mountain View Middle School. WLMW 90.7 FM. It's uplifting and powerful, and it's a good message all around. New Hampshire Family Radio. It's just a good station to listen to. Hi, this is Rich Gerard. As you know, our mission here at Gerard at Large is to connect local people, places, and things by bringing you news from our own backyard. Did you know that GoffstownToday.com has a similar mission? So when we want to know what's happening in Goffstown, Ware, Dunbarton, or New Boston, we go to GoffstownToday.com. Hi, this is Bill Wynn, publisher of GoffstownToday.com. If it's happening in Goffstown, Ware, Dunbarton, or New Boston, even in Pennardville, you can find out about it on GoffstownToday.com. If we know about it, you should too.